So one of the biggest issues that hurts newer traders in the market is the fact that there's a lack of a common terminology when it comes to trading, right? We have many different educators and many different books and YouTube channels and TikTok channels and, and whatnot explaining what technical analysis is. And for the most part, or maybe not for the most part, but a good amount of those educators are correct. The problem is we are going to refer to different things in a different way. And to a new trader coming into the market, it can become quite confusing. By the way, guys, my name is Akil Stokes. I'm a Forex trader and trading coach over at tier1trading.com. Welcome to the Weekend Trading Edge video. This is a weekly video I put up on my YouTube channel showing you the top trading opportunities on my radar for the week ahead. This week's a little bit slow. We're coming off a holiday weekend. Um, we also actually have a lot of news events coming out throughout the week, a lot of jobs numbers coming out from a lot of places, a lot of FOMC members speaking as well. So we could be in for a busy week of fundamental announcements. We'll kind of dig into that during the, the daily live streams here on the channel. Um, but today I wanted to take a chance to kind of focus on a single trading opportunity and a single simple pattern formation um, that I use very frequently in my trading. And that's going to be the double top and double bottom. And I'm here on the dollar Swiss daily, and this is going to be a perfect example of a double bottom, a textbook example of one how I would define it. Now, I'll give you a few different ways to look at it, right? Um, you'll see different definitions of double bottoms. Um, there are some people out there, double tops and double bottoms. There are some people out there that define any type of retest as a double top or double bottom. So you look at something like this and these two areas would be a double top. Or you look at something like the opposite side, these two areas would be a double bottom. Again, I'm not here to debate whose terminology is right, whose terminology is wrong. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters in trading is that you're doing what you're supposed to do consistently. You're seeing what you're supposed to do consistently. But I don't look at these moves as being double tops and double bottoms. These are retest of structure. And if we're going to count every retest of structure, the double top or double bottom, we're going to get into a lot of trouble when looking to kind of identify what the market is going to do. Right. So a double top or double bottom for me is a slight retracement, not a full retracement. Right. You see in, in these scenarios, right, price comes down. We retrace fully across back across the channel and then come back down to retest. Right. That's a completely different beast. It tells a completely different story. For me, double tops and double bottoms are brief retracements. So when price pulls down to a specific level of structure, we get a little bit of a reaction from it, and then we come back almost immediately to retest that structure and we end with a hold. So if you look at the chart in front of you, you'll see a perfect example of this, right? Again, dollar Swiss daily chart. Price action dove down to our previous VS1 level. If you guys are new, these red and green boxes on the chart, these are called VS1 levels, visual structure, one, I forgot what the one stood for, but <laughs> whatever our coder uh, decided to name it. But basically, there are visual representations of support and resistance. You can customize them to your liking. But I like them because they give us clues, little flicks on the back of the neck of, hey, you should be paying attention to this level. It is an important level. And you can see price came down right to that level. High moment to move off of our highs here at 101s. Oops, sorry, get my tool right. All the way. Nope, striking out here. There we go. All the way down to this level right then we stopped right so structure support proved to hold right rsi went oversold which is always nice we put in some consolidation candles right you can see the difference between these high momentum candles big strong wide ranged red candles right closes close to the bottom so we know that they're strong especially you know if you guys attended the workshop this past week you should know that by the way, got to shamelessly promote it one more time because the time is running out, guys. All of the recordings from our workshop, The Truth About Trading, that we hosted, what, I guess two weeks ago now, are up until December 1st. That's going to be Thursday. Thursday, they are being taken down. So if you haven't had a chance to see them or if you want one last chance to review, please do so. They are gone on Thursday, 10 plus hours of training. All you have to do is go over to www.tier1trading.com, sign up, and we'll shoot the recordings right to you. Please don't send me angry emails that you missed it because I'm trying to give you as much warning as possible. But 
in that workshop, we spoke about um, understanding kind of the, the, the different strengths of candles. So you can see a close towards the bottom, very small wick. These are going to be a strong candles. And then when we get down here, we see a little bit of a different story. I'm going to erase this VS1 for a little bit, right? We see candles with longer wicks. We see candles with smaller ranges. These are more indecision candles, consolidation candles. So price action comes down to that previous level structure, and then it has a think. It says, hmm, I don't know what I want to do here. Now, bigger picture, that think is from the buying and selling habits, right? Again, think about this, and, and this is how I personally like to interpret the market, and I hope not to confuse you, but instead of just looking at red and green candles, imagine these red and green candles being people, right? Now, that's weird. Now, you've, you've probably left the channel already, but imagine these red and green candles being buyers and sellers, right? We have a bunch of sellers, lots of sellers, strong women, and nothing but red candles, strong candles, high momentum candles. And then we get down here and there's more of an indecision. So that tells us two things, right? One, less sellers in the market. Not as many people are interested in selling. Two, there's also some buying interest. And then knowing that this was a previous level or is a previous level of structure support, no surprise that we have buying interest there as well. And remember, buying interest doesn't necessarily mean an entirely different party. It can come from multiple places. Buying interest can be from new buyers who are seeing support and kind of rubbing their hands together and saying, oh, yeah, I like this level. It held before. It shall hold again. Buying interest can also come from previous sellers who are saying, man, I made some pretty good bank. Christmas is coming up, right? Trying to got to buy the wife and kids some presents. Got to get the quarterly results or the end of year results looking good. Let's take some profit. And again, if they're selling, they have to buy to get out of their position. So you see a mix from both. Regardless, you see a reversal, a pivot in price action. You see price action come down to this level and then you see a little bit of relief up. Now, after that relief, we make one more move down to retest this level. And again, this is naturally how price moves. It extends, it retraces, it extends, it retraces. In this situation, again, it could be new sellers entering the market, maybe people that were late to this move and said, ah, oh, man, I missed it. And then we retrace a little bit more back up to 96s. And they're like, ah, oh, you know what? This is a second chance for me to get in. Um, and then we come back down to retest this level and we're at a decision point. And, and what this decision point will tell us is that Either the sellers will regain control and break our previous level of structure and continue down lower, or the buyers will hold. There's not enough selling pressure to push it down and we'll see a reversal. And with the double bottom pattern, that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for a retest of this level. We're looking for a hold, which we got so far, right? And then we're looking for a continued move back up. And again, you compare this with different things. You compare this with Fibonacci's, you compare this with structure, you compare this with an indicator looking for divergences, for example, um, overbought, oversold, and stuff like that. We have something called the CTS system, the combined technical scoring system, where we quantify the technical tools that we use, and then we have a point system to determine whether this is a good or a bad situation or a better or a worse trading situation, right? There's lots of things you can use here, but this is a good example of what I would call and how I define a double bottom. It's not a full blown kind of move all the way back up here and then all the way back down. It's a little bit of relief. You see a little bit of a gap in the middle and then a retest before the market potentially changes its mind. Now, when it comes to this trading example in particular, I'm not the biggest fan of it. This one's a little bit difficult as far as choosing targets, right? Because we're not in a clear directional move, right? We are in consolidation. Now, depending on your trading philosophy, this can be good or bad, right? If you are a consolidation trader that trades kind of channel uh, channel end to channel end, you may be looking for a move from VS1 to VS1, and that's going to give you an ultimate move. Me, I'm more of a conservative trader personally, so I, I, I have no belief that we're likely to go all the way back across. It doesn't mean it won't happen, just as far as it's, I'm not willing to put my hard earned money at risk for that. So I like to look for more counter trend type of moves, small places that we go to. And this one's a little bit difficult, but we can bring in some of our tools and create some ideas for you guys. One, I could bring in a Fibonacci retracement for my swing high to swing low, this recent move. I know which key Fib levels are gonna be important to me. This 3D2 is gonna be important. This 50%, technically not a Fib level, but psychological level is gonna be important. And the 618, the golden mean, these are going to be important levels. And you can see all three of these levels happen to line up with some pretty decent levels of structure as well. Look left, structure leaves clues, right? 618, right in there. 9850, even handle number as well. 50%, right? Not as much looking left, but 
kind of the, a small inside level of structure right here, um, 9750, another even handled number. And then the 382 is gonna be this little pregnant pause right here. It doesn't seem like much here on the, on, on the daily, but as you go down to, um, let's say like the hour or the four hour, something like that, you'll see that makes a lot more sense. So a few different levels we can look for. We can also bring in one of my new favorite friends and I'm excited because we're getting, I've been testing this thing for a year, right? I gave myself a year to play around with it and basically two years to study volume. I started two years ago and then did a full year of testing to give you kind of a, an idea of how long it takes for me to change anything in my trading. Um, but I love this volume profile tool, right? And what you'll see is it, it paints Paints a little area here. Um, trading view is a good one as well. Paints a little area here that tells me the volume interest in these levels, right? So you can see these levels happen to line up with the levels we're looking at as well. You get a bigger one at the 3D2, a little bit below it. We have one at the 618. Um, I'll bring another one on trading view. It's a little bit more, the settings I have are a little bit more cleaner, cleaner over there. But the fact is we do have some volume interest at these levels too. So let's head over to trading view real quick. I'm just gonna bring over, what am I looking at here? dollar swiss there we go that way i can use my risk reward tool as well and let's go down to the four hour right let's just remark up our charts real quick give me a second mm -mm -mm. while you guys are waiting do me a favor hit that like button subscribe if you're new i do a lot of uploads to this channel seems like daily now between or multiple times a day between shorts and uh podcasts and live streams and this so make sure you don't miss it subscribe uh, hit that like button show your support let's go down to the four hours bring our volume profile back in from the four hour yeah and let's just see what we're looking at here usually the trading view one gives me a little bit of a line that shows me the most important level let's see if it does it here boom okay yeah so we've got our few levels right here again 618 50 percent 382 and then we have our highest profile our highest volume spike a little bit below that 618 level again looks like right out of even handle 98 even as well so you may want to take that into account so those are some ideas for targets um and let's look at the risk profile here now again everyone's risk reward and, and whatnot is going to be a little bit different but if we take this how i would traditionally look at it with an atr stop I'll give you an idea of what this looks like right here right so let's say we get long at market on the open Stops are gonna be about, I think our ATR is about 100, so we're looking at 93, 50, 53, so 92, 53. So one ATR stop would be about right here. Now again, you don't have to use one ATR, use whatever your normal stop loss is, half ATR, two ATR, whatever it is. This is the part you gotta do on your own, guys. Um, but just to give you kind of an idea of the different risk profiles here, if you're looking for a move to the 3D2, you're gonna get exactly a one to one. If you're looking for a move to the 50%, you're gonna get a little bit more than a one-to-one. -one. If you're looking for a move all the way to that 618, right now we're getting close to kind of two-to-one risk reward. And of course, if you're looking higher, you're gonna have much higher. Now, again, when you set up your risk profile, you don't wanna set up your risk profile based off of the risk reward you want. So I think it's a very bad idea to be like, hey, I want to have a one-to-one -one, so i'll measure out my stop and just put my target out of one-to-one -one. i think that's a very bad idea you want to place your target where you think price action will likely to go i think we did a video the other day called smart target taking or talking about how most people aren't good at taking targets you can go back and watch that if you want more info but that's very important and i was having a conversation with one of our tier one trading members um this morning exactly or, or actually or i responded to an email this morning where he's been working on kind of developing different rules for the cipher pattern and we talked a little bit about trailing stops and, and and risk management and it reminded me of a trader that i worked with for a few years now um named cody and he started implementing this when he was going through his prop firm challenge right so when he started during the pandemic um he took the leap and said hey i'm going to go for one of these prop firm challenges um learned the hard way um that it's not as easy as a lot of people make it seem it's actually very difficult but fortunately he had the skills to adapt his trading style to meet the goals that were required and something that he did during that was a was an aggressive trail instead of a conservative target right he had to take more aggressive targets because he had to reach this quota in order to pass the challenge but he also had to stay within very specific risk parameters so 
he didn't want to take money out early because he wouldn't wouldn't get enough profit to meet the requirements, but he also couldn't have so much at risk. So one of the things that he did was he started taking more aggressive targets. So let's say he's shooting up here for this 1618. He would take more aggressive targets, but as price action moved up to key levels, right? And key levels can be whatever you define it as, right? It could be in this case, structure high right here. It could be the 382, it could be the 50%. As price action hit these key levels, and these key levels are not just randomly picked, they're, they're technical levels that basically say, hey, you are right, you should not be wrong. And that's the thing in trading. When the market tells you, not you, not your brain, right? Because we say it all the time. When the market tells you that you're more likely to be right than wrong, when it pushes the probabilities in your favor by breaking or violating or getting to a technical level, you have the ability to adjust your stop loss, right? So for example, if price action breaks the peak of this double bottom right here, right? We should never return down here, right? If you're going to be right, there is no way price should ever return below this level. There's no way price should ever return below this double bottom just from a technical perspective. So if the market is telling you that, hey, you're more likely to be right or I'm moving your direction and I'm, I should never return here because if I do, you're going to lose, right? There's no reason to take this much of a loss. So what you can do in that scenario is start adjusting your risk, right? You move your risk, reduce your risk, right? You don't necessarily take profit out right away, so you don't get anything in your bank account, but you reduce risk on the back end. If you ask any professional trader, they'll tell you that the number one rule of trade, well, number one rule of trading is don't go broke. Second number one rule of trading is don't go broke. Third rule, right, would be conservation of capital. That is the, the main thing. How can I either lock in profit as quickly as possible? And by quickly, I mean per rules, right? Not just randomly. How can I lock in profit, <clears throat> excuse me, as quickly as possible or and or how can I reduce risk? So as price action gets to these specific levels, right? And these checkpoints, what you can do is you can reduce your risk, hopefully get it to break even, hopefully get it to in profit where the worst case scenario is that you're in profit. Um, that way, if price goes in your favor, obviously you make your profit. If it doesn't go in your favor, either you still collect a little bit or at least you don't lose any. And that's a good position to be in. I actually just did a trading coach podcast episode. I don't know, I don't know when it's going to be out yet, but hopefully I'll schedule it soon talking about or discussing the topic of, hey, is it better to take single or multiple targets? Because that's also an option here, right? We have three target levels that we kind of projected out. We spoke about reducing risk or locking targets in. Another method is saying, hey, I take a third off at target one, a third off at target two, my final third off at target three, or maybe I leave one on for the big boy up here. That is another method as well, but just remember that bigger targets don't always mean bigger profits, but I'll let you guys listen to the podcast for that. Thank you guys for joining again. Before you leave, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, that way you don't miss the next upload. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or comments about what you saw here in the video, and don't forget 10 plus hours of free, 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 free training available until Thursday, December 1st, right? www.tier1trading.com. You'll see a little pop-up thing that says the truth about trading. Enter your email, sign up. We'll shoot you an email with a link to the recordings. You can watch it. Lots of good workshop discussions, lots of good training sessions on technical analysis, treating your trading like a business, trading psychology, even fundamental analysis as well. So everything you need to know about how to get on the right path to become a consistently profitable trader is in that workshop. If you do not watch it, how can I believe that you actually want to improve? How can you tell yourself that you actually want to improve? All right, I'll see you guys next week in the live stream. Until then, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care.